So let's start by putting our eye level up. So we have to remember, always be conscious of where it is, because remember, below eye level, you're going to see more of the tops of things, and above eye level, you see the underside. So the underside is a, is a crucial thing to know. Let's extend it in case we want to add a couple of vanishing points, because one point and two point perspective can belong together. So if you turn your set square until all these corners line up, you'll find a vanishing point. So if I go from five to the corner, see how the, all of the, I'm five down here, and I go through all the corners, if I follow along, it'll meet up at the eye level. So that's a 45 degree vanishing point right there. So if I go to seven, see how all the lines, all the corners line up? And there's my other vanishing point. It's a 45, so that's a 45. You go from 5 at the bottom through that corner, and you go up, and you'll get a vanishing point left. So that's VP left and VP right. But I want you to know that it's always possible to make something in two-point in a one-point perspective. So let's just um, maybe make a box. You can make it just a small box. Make it anywhere. And um, you don't have to line it up with corners. But let's try using these two vanishing points to draw a box. Now, usually when you draw in two-point perspective, you start with the corner. So it doesn't matter how big it is. Just try it and see what happens. Don't, don't make it too big because we want to have room for everything else. But just have it freestanding here. So I'm using one vanishing point, then I'm using the other. Because after the break, we'll be using two-point perspectives. We want to make sure that we remember how to do it. And I'm using the... You can use your parallel ruler but I'm using the lines at the back to help me to make a straight line here. So you can see I've got one side already. And there's the other side. And now I just need the top. So at this corner, I just use this vanishing point and I can make the top. And remember to cross your corners. It'll give you a more accurate corner, a more square corner. If anybody's so inspired, if you find that you want to add something to the drawing that we're doing, or put your light fixture in two point, then you you can you'll know how to do that now. But for the most part, what we'll be doing is using the single vanishing point. We have a gable for the assignment, but I thought it might be nice to round this out instead. So from here, we'll draw a straight line up. And you can go right off the grid. We'll extend this up so we can make a, an arc. Bless you. and draw a line across. Now, to make an arc, we're going to need a V. And we need to divide it into three parts, three equal parts.
and then you just roll it over. Remember not to fill this up. See, I'm filling too much of that up. To make a, a true circle, I have to bring it down a little bit. So it's, it's a gentle arc that we're looking for. And what this involves is you having to ignore the... Now, if we had our flexi curve, we could round that out nicely. But what this involves is you having to ignore the lines of the grid itself and just separate everything out and look at what you're actually drawing. So, I'm drawing this arc, so I'm separating it out from everything else on the grid. Now, I have to do that at the back as well. I have to raise that up, so let's bring this down. Now, I have to ignore the ceiling that's there and go straight up. And you see where these two meet? I have now brought that original box that I started with. I brought it back using the vanishing point. You have to keep using your vanishing point. Bring this up. So now I can bring this across and I have to ignore the ceiling that's already there So when you make your gable, you'll have to do follow the, the instructions, the video instructions there, and you'll have to do the same thing. So I'm going to make a V, the same V right here. And divide into three parts. And you may not be confident about your decision in three parts, but you have to start somewhere. That's why we're using these non-erasable items, so that you have to, you have something to compare to when you try to fix something. So there's our second curve now. And if you can turn your paper around, you can turn your paper around to get a better to get a nice curve, or we'd use that flexi curve. Inside that box, if we want to find the center of this new ceiling, we have to use that box up there. We have to make an X inside that box. So make an X inside here. So see, here's one corner. There's another corner, and there's a corner, and there's a corner. So we're going to make an X inside that box. And we know where the center is, so all we're really looking for is that. So you don't have to draw the whole, all the solid line. You can just make an where they meet. So they meet there. So. If I want to hang something down from the center of my ceiling, I'd hang it down from there. 